grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. come to give you praise for the strength to live your word let us pray to the lord have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy help save and defend us O god Celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. celebration all of creation sings for joy to the god of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore power and riches wisdom and might all honor and glory to christ forever now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers from every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation, and form us into the body of your Son, that they may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Y'all may be seated for the reading. First reading is from the 51st chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 6. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and I give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands will wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, 
and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We will now sing responsively Psalm 138, led by our cantor. to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. <coughs> When I called you, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the high from afar. Though I, <clears throat> though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Second reading is from the tw 12th chapter of Romans, verses 1 through 8. A reading from Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry and ministering, the teacher and teaching, the exhorter and exhortation, the giver and generosity, the leader and diligence, the compassionate and cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Y'all may be seated. Any uh, young people that want to come up for a special message can meet me right up front. How's it going? You guys doing all right? Oh, man, is school going okay so far? Yeah, you're only a couple weeks in. you got a long ways to go. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, school can be weird sometimes. And sometimes it is boring, but sometimes it's really cool, maybe. Very often, I don't know. Today, we just read a a story about Jesus, and Jesus kind of asked his disciples, "Uh, how do you tell people about me? Who do you tell people that I am? How do you talk about me as Jesus or about God? And it made me wonder, how do we talk about God? Is there something that you might tell a friend about God or something like that? How do you talk about God? Who do you say that, that God is in your life? That's a weird question, right? You have any, yeah, what? He's our savior. He's our savior. Yeah, Jesus is a savior. That's a good way to say it. Anything else? It's tough sometimes, right? So I thought we could think about one way that we could talk about God today. And I brought this yo-yo that Emily's already seen uh, because I wanted to try to think of God maybe like a yo-yo. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. So sometimes... I, God, we've never seen God, right? You've never seen God with your own two eyes. Sometimes you hear God, yeah. Sometimes you might feel God, that kind of thing. But sometimes it might be a little bit difficult. It might be hard to understand where God is or who God is. And we might feel far away from God. And so I thought that this yo-yo would be a good thing because sometimes we feel pretty close to God. If this is us over here on this finger, and this is God, the yo-yo, the orange yo-yo, Sometimes we might feel close to God if we hear God saying something to us or if we feel God in our lives through the love of other people. And sometimes it can be hard. Maybe on a bad day when we we don't feel as close to God, we feel a little bit further away. And then some days it's even harder when we get a little farther away, farther away. And sometimes we feel really far from God. But like a yo-yo, we're never too far from God. Because God always comes back to us. So I want us to remember that, that God is sort of like a yo-yo, because God doesn't ever get too far from us. And even when we feel far from God, or if we try to push God away, God always comes back to us. And so I also wanted to practice my yo-yo skills and just show you a little bit better how it might work. So if we feel far from God, but then God comes back to us, and far from God, and God comes back to us, That's a pretty cool way to think about God, too, right? You've never gotten that good with your yo-yo? It's fun, right? It's going to be hard for me to preach later, I think. (laughs) Oh, it's hard, yeah. If you lose your yo-yo, then you don't get to practice. But maybe I'll let you play with this after church. Not right now. But let's think about that. And that could be one way that we might tell people about God. Other ways that you learn about God are in Sunday school, in between church and stuff like that. You might learn about God from somebody at church or a parent, somebody else. And so we're just here to try to learn different ways that we can talk about God to ourselves and to other people in our lives. Let's pray, and then we'll go back to our seats, and you can stand and sing the hymn of the day with everybody, okay? Let's pray. You can say these words after me if you want. Dear God, thank you for being in our lives. Even when we feel far away, you always get close to us. Sort of like a yo-yo. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Y'all can stand and sing the hymn of the day.
Y'all may be seated. This weekend, there was supposed to be a gathering, a relatively large gathering in Scotland. Hundreds of people were planning to travel from all over with the same kind of energy uh, that you might expect at a soccer match or uh, maybe a music festival. This event, though, was more of a scientific celebration. Participants wanted to show off some of their high-tech equipment, things like infrared cameras on drones, uh, hydrophones that can detect sounds deep below the surface of the ocean, things like that. These crowds hoped to meet in Scotland in a town, a small town called Inverness, and surround a body of water, fresh water, called Loch Ness. So perhaps by now you've caught on that this wasn't your typical group of scientists coming together, but these are monster hunters <laughs> who wanted to catch a glimpse of proof that the legendary Loch Ness monster does indeed exist. It's the largest monster hunt at Loch Ness in decades, and the goal was to inspire some new believers to take over this hobby and storytelling for years to come. While many might be skeptical that these folks will only see a few ducks skimming the water and nothing more, an interview with one of the people planning to join produced this gem of a quote. It's nice for people to have something to believe in. <laughs> now that's certainly a feeling that we can all understand. It's nice to have something to believe in. This is a wholesome little anecdote about a group of people that we don't know, but I think that the motivations of amateur monster hunters that show up at Loch Ness are not too different from someone who might wander into a church on Sunday morning. Because we all show up to church looking for something. We might expect to see or hear something in particular. We might keep our expectations low and remain open to experiencing something new. We might be here with a question to answer or a feeling that we've been missing. At the heart of it, though, I think we're all here looking for a glimpse of Jesus. This morning, Jesus' question to his disciples is a convicting one. Who do you say that I am? That's a question that folks might have in their minds when they walk into church on any given week. Who do we say that Jesus is? How does this congregation portray Jesus to its members, to any visitors in the pews, to community that we reside in, to the university that sits right down the street? Who do we say that Jesus is? Perhaps that's the most important question of all. Peter's answer is that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus is the long-awaited fulfillment of the hope that believers have had for generation upon generation. He is the relief that is given to those who have been in pain and suffering, those who have had no home, those who have been hated or ignored. He is the reconciliation given to broken relationships and regrets that have been held on to. Jesus is the promise of a life that is better than the lives that we've been living, a life that does not end at death. Is that who we say that Jesus is? Think about the different ways that Jesus is portrayed in our society. There's a, a wide spectrum of images that we might have seen. On one end, Jesus is the sort of CEO of a very exclusive, privileged group of people who are governed by a rigid set of rules and beliefs. And on the other end, Jesus is a sort of amorphous abundance of love a cost-free vending machine of universal salvation. Where are we on that line? Are we on one end or the other? Are we somewhere in the middle? Again, who do we say that Jesus is? What do we want people to see and hear and experience when they show up at University Lutheran Church on a Sunday morning? If we think about Peter's confidence that Jesus is the Messiah, this is an answer that Jesus certainly seems to agree with. What is it about that image of Jesus that is so right? The embodiment of relief and rest. 
of affirmation and empowerment, of reconciliation, of hope? How do we tell and show people that Jesus? This was the first week of classes for Clemson University. It was actually only half of a week, which is a nice way to ease into the busyness of a semester. But I had this question on my mind as I walked around campus one day and wondered what message University Lutheran Church and Lutheran Campus Ministry has for tens of thousands of students here this year. Who do we say that Jesus is? How do we want to love and support the campus community? We've had a few dozen people interact with us in different ways this week. And like amateur monster hunters, students show up looking for something specific. Maybe a place that reminds them of the church that they grew up in. Maybe a place that they want to meet new friends and have a good time. Maybe it's a quiet place to study. A place that challenges them and helps them to grow as young adults. I think one of the best things that this congregation can do and does is provide space that can be a home for students while they're away from home or it can be a new home for students who have been feeling lost or alone. A place where they can show up exactly the way they are and find the love and support they need while they're here. That can be a tricky thing, home. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you carry around a cell phone, your, your cell phone tracks where your home might be. <laughs> Wherever you spend the most time at night and sleep, maybe the time of day that you might be eating, your phone understands where your home is. But I had a friend recently move to a new place, and while they were getting used to a new place, their phone started to call that new place home. <laughs> Even though they didn't quite feel at home in that new place yet, they didn't feel settled. So maybe home is more than a geographic location that we spend most of our time. Maybe it's more than a place where we find a roof over our head. But home is a place that we feel welcome. So this can be a home. It's a place of rest and relief, of affirmation and empowerment, of reconciliation and not shame, of faith and hope and love. You know what, that sounds a lot like the kind of Jesus that we want to show people. The Messiah kind of Jesus that Peter was talking about. So thank you. Thank you for being a congregation who portrays Jesus in such a robust way. And for holding us accountable when we start to stray from that goal. Thank you for welcoming students who show up looking for something. For feeding them. For loving them. For mentoring them and celebrating with them and spreading that same sense of home, that same feeling of home, to anybody else who walks through these doors. Amen. Let us stand together and profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, <clears throat> let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation.
God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family of faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Remind us that from the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Stir the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts, to respond to your teachings. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. Hear us, O God. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low. Keep safe any in the midst of trouble and protect vulnerable people from harm. Especially we ask for Larry, Jean, Joyce, Michael, Herm, Jimmy, Gail, Pat, Rosalind, Tony, Martha, Bob, Randy, Alton, Scott, Greg, Margaret, Mona, Jean, Chris, Ken, Elise, Paul, Kirsten, Nadia, Ellen, Pat, Pedro, and any others we now name, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents in service to your church. Energize this congregation's rostered and lay leaders, musicians, teachers, greeters, and administrators, so they may be transformed into sharing your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, hear now these other prayer petitions offered up by these your people, whether spokenly, aloud, or written silently in their hearts. Hear us, O God. God of all the saints, Death is overcome in Christ's resurrection. We rejoice with the faithful departed. This morning we pray for the family of Carrie Smith as they grieve the loss of his aunt, Jackie Mentz. Sustain us in hope until we come at last to our heavenly home. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we command all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also Let's share that peace with one another now. Peace, God.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful, God, and everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and in every generation. And above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us in your whole creation. Amen. Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Y'all may be seated. At this time, we'll have the Holy Communion Sacrament together, and all are welcome to come forward for the bread and the wine or for a blessing. Uh, you can come up row by row. If you're on my left, you can start here at the back and wrap around this side of the altar towards the middle. And if you're on my right, if you'll start here in the middle and wrap around towards the back of this side of the altar. I'll come first with bread. If you'd rather have a gluten-free wafer, we have those available. You can just let me know. 
Uh, and then Dan will come with the wine. And if you prefer grape juice, you can simply raise your index finger like this to let him know, and he'll give you grape juice. Uh, and if you'd like to come forward today for a blessing instead of the bread and the wine, uh, you can cross your arms over your chest like this, and I'll say a blessing or a prayer for you. Uh, if you're communing at home, as you pass the plate, the words are, this is the body of Christ given or broken for you. And as you pass the cup, uh, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. But as I said, this is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. <laughs>
please stand as you're able for these final blessings. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment that we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks even into the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. <laughs>